Swinburne University of Technology. Hello, my name is Janet Hiller. I'm the Dean of Health Sciences and I come from a public health background. Public health is new to Swinburne and that's a reflection of the changes that are occurring in health sciences at Swinburne University. Currently there are four areas within health sciences at Swinburne. There's psychological sciences, which is the longest standing department. There's a relatively new department of statistics, data science and epidemiology. There's a department of biomedical and health sciences. And there is our very new and growing Department of Health Professions, currently with one person in place. So we are changing every day and that means that we are welcoming a broader and broader range of PhD students. So a PhD in Health Sciences should really be an engagement between the student and the university in doing a topic that makes a difference to people's lives. That's what we're about in Health Sciences. Most of our PhD students to date have worked in the areas of clinical psychology, social psychology, neuroscience, psychophysiology, psychopharmacology, taking advantage of our outstanding facilities both in the clinical domain and in our neuroimaging equipment. A growing area is in our forensics, forensic psychology, forensic behavioural sciences, with a very strong group based around the Centre for Forensic Behavioural Sciences, contacts both within the private and the public prison sector, and also doing experimental work around um, witness identification. So these areas lend themselves to all sorts of opportunities outside psychology into health promotion, um, disease prevention and some of the neuroscience topics. We take in a substantial number of PhD students every year. Till recently students completed a traditional thesis always based around data collection, so they are empiric it's empirical work. There is an increasing move to thesis by publication. That's a model that I strongly, strongly endorse because I think it is in the best interests of the student and the university. And it gives the taxpayer, who's actually subsidising the cost of your PhD, a return on their investment, which is, I think, a little greater than the leather-bound document that sits on the shelves of the library. When you come to Swinburne, you should try to engage in the breadth of activities that are occurring that are health related. Not all the health research at Swinburne occurs within the School of Health Sciences. There are all sorts of interesting things happening across the various faculties, business and law, science, um, engineering and technology. There are all sorts of interesting health related projects that are occurring in design and in arts, social sciences and humanities. We strongly encourage people to look at doing interdisciplinary research. We have particularly perhaps in our statistics and data science and epidemiology area, people who are collaborating with other parts of the university for their theses. This is something that Swinburne can do well and it can enrich your life as a student. When you start working at Swinburne as a PhD student, you should have a conversation with your supervisor about the sorts of skills you'd like to develop throughout your PhD. What sort of person do you want to look like at the end? And you should map out activities that you can be involved in throughout your candidature that will get you to that position. You should also look at your relationship with a, your supervisor as a partnership. The supervisor is representing the interests of the university and has a responsibility to, pro, to guide you through your PhD journal, journey. Students also have a responsibility. They have a responsibility to themselves to finish a project of which they can be proud 
that, that is going to make a difference. They have a responsibility to the university and they have a responsibility to the taxpayer who is endorsing, paying, covering the costs of their education. So I think it's really important that students embark on a PhD being aware of the impact it can have on their personal lives. It can actually be, it's a hard grind getting through a PhD. It's intellectually very rewarding, but you need to make sure that you've got your friends and family behind you and that you can manage your life around embarking on this journey and that you can engage in a project that you're interested in that's going to keep you fired up for the period of three or four years, which is your period of candidature. I look forward to meeting with PhD students in the School of Health Sciences, and I hope you have a, an exciting, stimulating and rewarding time while you're at Swinburne. This has been a Swinburne production. 